I call the Honourable Clayton Speaker, Cosgrove. Mr Speaker, I'll, I'll tell you what this opposition will say no to. It'll say no, it's not good enough that there are 146,000 people unemployed. This opposition will stand with New Zealanders and say no, it's not good enough that the government, that there are 90,000 young people not in educational training. This opposition will say no, it's not good enough that this government didn't get off its backside and utilise that what, what is a disaster in Christchurch, but what is also a major opportunity, what is also the world's biggest training scheme, to train the 30 or 40,000 apprentices say that we need in Christchurch, that three years from that disaster would have finished their apprenticeship and be the tradespeople we need, rather than having to, as business does now, because they can't wait for this government to wake up, having to import our Irish brothers and sisters, our Filipino brothers and sisters and others to come and fill the skills gap because this government was asleep at the wheel and would not take advantage of the opportunity out of that tragedy. So we say no to that member to those things. Now this crowd over here, in 2008 of course, when they took office, we were going to have, remember, the brighter future. There was a grand plan. There was a vision. Remember all those wonderful little commercials with the Prime Minister at, uh, I think it was the local private school, ironic though that is, at the same time as they throw a couple of million bucks to kids who need a feed in the morning, they give 11 million bucks in the budget to private schools. That's one thing. But remember the vision. Remember the brighter future. These apparently, this was the party, this is the party of sound financial managers. This is the party, they say, who understood a new business. This is the party that could run businesses like SOEs. Well, this is the party, I say, and I'm glad the Minister for SOEs isn't here. That man couldn't run a bar, let alone an SOE. Thanks to his mismanagement, for instance, of solid energy, as he grins away in his little Cheshire cat little way over there, grinning away, you, you sad little man. That man, of course, was asleep on the couch in his office in the Beehive, as the Crown Monitoring Unit kept telling him in Treasury that Solid Energy, that under a Labor administration, was an export award-winning company returning tens of millions of dollars to the taxpayer every year, the Treasury told him for over two years it was in trouble. He could have woken up, picked up the newspaper and worked out that the international price of coal was going down the gurgler. He could have then picked up the phone and called his former mate, Mr Palmer, his former mate, after he was shafted, and actually said, what's plan B? How are we going to consolidate this asset and preserve it and make sure it's OK in these tough financial times for the taxpayer? Well, the truth is that that minister, just like this budget, tinkered around, minced around, tinkered, didn't listen to the advice, knew it, possibly didn't read the reports, and as a result, we now know that his government and his Prime Minister are now considering letting the whole show fall over, if that wasn't bad enough. $395 million and counting down the gurgler, thanks to his mismanagement, and over 500 jobs lost. Now, the last speaker talked about job creation, and he talked about some programs, a convention centre, but he also was going to list for us all these jobs that have been created. Remember the cycleway? I think um, there was a fish and chip shop and a bike shop that got a few jobs out of that. That went down the, out the window. The International Financial Centre of Excellence that New Zealand was going to be, remember that? Well, that went down, out the window as well. So 146,000 people in a two-speed economy in this country, some of the people doing very well, many of our people doing very badly and scraping for it as a legacy of this government. 500 solid energy workers and counting down the gurgler. No more can Tony Ryle or John Key or Bill English ever claimed to be sound financial managers when they went to sleep and watched a company, the people's asset, go down the gurgler. The last speaker talked about an auction. Well, I predict this. Solid Energy, she will be the biggest fire sale that we have seen in our time as they allow that company to tip over. Because it is true, sir, that New Zealand is in a two-speed regime, a two-speed economy. It is the case, sir, that we now have the, have, the haves and the have-nots big time. And if we look at jobs, the amount of jobs created. Well, since Stephen Joyce became Tertiary Education and Employment Minister, they say there's a few thousand jobs created. Where was the brighter future and the grand plan 
to actually assist the 146,000 people who are on the scrap heap thanks to these guys. A government that inherited zero Crown debt. The last speaker, I can't remember his name, talked about debt. Well, I'll tell you what they inherited. Zero Crown debt and nine years of surpluses. Not projections, not rumours, not spin, facts. Zero Crown debt and nine years of surpluses, which they then mismanaged and squandered. So they can't stand up today and crow about being sound financial managers when you look at the litany of disasters, particularly the SOE minister, who will go down in history as the worst SOE minister in living history since the promulgation of SOEs as a piece of legislation, the worst, biggest mismanager of SOEs, because he sat there and he twiddled his little thumbs and he didn't listen to the advice and he did nothing. And people, sir, of course, are paying for that. And then we look at things like housing affordability, skyrocketing all over the country. Can't blame the earthquake for what's happening in Auckland or other parts of the country. You look at the earthquake in Christchurch, the so-called grand plan. Well, I say to that, those members over there, three years down the track, there are still a large number of the population where I live who are hurting because they can't get their EQC claims, because they can't unlock their insurance money, because they can't actually take charge of, not through inability, not through inability or through laziness or anything like that, they can't simply get their hands on the levers to can take control of their own lives. But what actually does this crowd do in the budget? Well, not a lot. Bit of money sprinkled here, bit of money sprinkled there. In some ways, you could call this budget a bit of a Holyoke budget, because old Kiwi Keith was known to be a tinkerer. He tinkered around the edges. Of course, he was, I think he, the Prime Minister, he's the sort of hero for the Prime Minister. But Kiwi Keith, of course, Sir Keith Holyoke's government, took the record for just tinkering around the edges, doing a few populist things, not actually ups upsetting the apple cart, just mowing along, you know, she'll be right, we can hoodwink the people. You look at child poverty. Now, child poverty is a disgrace in this country, and we have five measures, I'm told, five, I believe, to actually gauge and measure the extent of child poverty. Although I don't think, you know, if you walk around the streets of many of our cities, or most or all of our cities, you can get a pretty good gauge very, very quickly. It is a disgrace. You, you'd think, you know, there is a saying, if you measure it, you can do something about it because you actually know what the quantum of the problem is. But this crowd get up and won't even use a measure of child poverty. They won't even take the abacus out, in Jerry Brownlee's case, or the calculator, and actually say, we will measure the quantum that is child poverty. We will put a definition around it, we will measure it, and we will front it and we will do something about it because we know the extent that it is. These guys will not even do that. They get up in the House day after day and just simply refuse to use any measure to calculate the disgrace that they have put in place in this country in respect to child poverty. You've got action that's needed, we know, around superannuation. Super costs have already increased from 7.3 billion in 2008 to 10.2 billion this year. We know that the cost of superannuation will exceed the cost of primary, secondary and tertiary education within two years. Yet what is the, government, the government's answer about that? I've been in the United States recently with colleagues from across the House. Huge issue in the United States. They are just starting to grapple with how they deal with those in that key entitlement program. But here, this government believes that the way you secure superannuation is to just let it go and let it blow out. Whereas we say on this House, it needs to be reformed, it needs to be protected, it needs to be stabilised, but we've got to make a few hard decisions for people my age and a wee bit younger in terms of what contribution we make. So I say, where is the vision? I say to the Minister of SOEs, who'll jump up in a second, take a call, this is his opportunity as the worst Minister of SOEs in our history, who's presided over more mismanagement than any other, to actually explain why it was he was asleep at the wheel, why he was, it's, uh, the, the wrist will be okay, mate, why it was that he did nothing, why it was that he took no advice, 
why it was that he won't be accountable and why it was he won't even front the media with some answers. Because, Minister, people want answers. They want to know why it is the $395 million that they'll have to cough and why over 500 people and counting are unemployed because of his mismanagement. Mr Speaker. Uh, the Honourable Tony Ryle. Uh, I move that this debate be now adjourned. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. For the contrary, no. The ayes have it. This debate is adjourned and set down for resumption next sitting day. Order. Call on government orders of the day, numbers 2 to 10. Interrupted debate.